Cool, what's up guys? Justin here with the renderingessentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the caustics function contained inside of D5 Render and how you can use it to make your lighting even more realistic. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so just as kind of a general high level discussion, caustics are basically um, the way that light refracts through an object and shows up on a surface. Um, so basically what that means is that means that if you have light that bounces off of an irregular surface, what's gonna happen is the light ray is going to refract and then it's gonna hit different surfaces. And, still, and so instead of it just like going straight onto an object and then casting a shadow where the object um, blocks the object, or just doing like a singular bounce right here, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get this kind of like splitting effect. And so in practice, it's going to look something like this. You've probably seen caustics. Um, if you've ever looked at like the uh, floor of a swimming pool, or um, if you've ever looked at the way that light goes through a glass object. But this is something that is now calculated in real time inside of D5 Render. And so I wanted to show you how to enable it and how to set it up so that you can get caustics in your scene. So first off, let's jump over into D5 Render. And so right now I've got a very simple scene in here, right? I've got a wall right here, um, I've got a floor, and what I wanna do is I wanna add an object. And so specifically in this case, we're gonna start with just a cylinder right here, right? And so what we wanna do is we want to take light and we want to refract it through the cylinder and cast it on the wall here. And so the way that we're gonna do that is I'm gonna add a strip light. And so I've already created the strip light right here. This is basically a light that is going to shine upwards, right? So I've got it set this way. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide these two point lights now. So the strip light is really going to be the only thing that's casting light in our scene. We're gonna go ahead and make it just a bit wider right here, just like this. And so you can see how right now what's happening is this cylinder in here is blocking the light. So we've got a little light shining through right here, and then the cylinder's blocking our light, and then we've got a little bit of light making it around the cylinder up top here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna change this so that the cylinder is transparent, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select this object right here. I'm gonna click the drop down. I'm gonna click on the option for transparent. That's just gonna give us a simple glass material. Okay, and so now what's happening is the strip light is shining light upward and it's going just straight through the glass, right? So if I move this up and down, you can kind of see um, the effect changing in here. But what isn't happening is the cylinder is no longer blocking the light from getting through, right? The light is kind of uniform, where before, when this was solid, that wasn't the case. So if we were to switch this back to custom, notice how it's blocking the light. So we've got this in here as a glass material, so it's no longer blocking the light, but it's not doing any kind of refraction of the light, right? It's not doing the caustics in this scene. And so in order to have it do the caustics, we need to do two things. You need to toggle on caustics in your light source. So we're gonna select our light source, scroll down, and actually the caustics are already toggled on in this light source, but you can find that down here, but notice how it's still not doing anything, right? If I adjust the intensity, nothing is happening. The reason for that is you also need to turn caustics on in your material. So we're gonna sample this material, scroll down, and we're looking for the option for caustics, right? We'll notice how when we do that, now all of a sudden this light is being refracted in here. And so what's happening is instead of us just getting that effect where the light is just kind of shining through the object, it's actually refracting the light in our scene. And notice how if you move this light around, right, you start getting some kind of interesting results, right? You're getting some refraction off the edges, other things like that. So this is actually kind of bending the light and then casting it along the surface. So notice how it's no longer uniform, it's brighter down here and it's dimmer up here. Now, this is an interesting effect, but it doesn't necessarily give us the look that we're going for, right? And so the reason we're not getting the look that we're going for is because this surface is totally smooth right? It's 100% smooth. So all it's doing is it's not actually doing anything other than kind of like bending the light and moving it up here. Whoops, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle on my mouse cursor so you can see this a little better, but you can see it's just kind of like uniformly bending this up here. Now where this gets really interesting though is if you do this with a non-uniform surface. 
So there are a couple ways that we could generate a non-uniform surface. The first is we could go through and we could manually model out a cylinder that's got a bunch of ups and downs in there. I don't necessarily recommend that because it's a lot of extra work for no gain. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to, with this material selected, so I'm going to sample this material, I'm going to add a normal map to this object. Remember what a normal map does is it simulates bumpiness of a surface. Well in this case, and you can pick whatever normal map you want. This is just one, I think this is a texture haven normal map. Really any normal map will work. But notice what this does is this simulates the ground. Um, but it doesn't really matter. I just want something with ups and downs so that the light gets refracted a little bit. So I'm going to select this normal map right here. And what I want to do is I want to adjust that normal value up like this. So notice how the bumpier this is, the more that light is being refracted in here. And so all we're doing is we're just taking a surface in here, we're making it bumpy. And then what it's doing is it's refracting the light. Now this gets really interesting because we could come in here and we can adjust the way that this refracts by reflecting it like this, right? So all we're doing is we're rotating the cylinder in here. And because that normal map is projected across the surface, every time we turn this, it's changing. And so what we can do then is we can use that in order to make this kind of like interesting moving effect. And so one thing that you can do is you can also scroll down and you can affect the intensity of the caustics in the light settings right here. So you can set how intense this is, but you can also set how soft the effect is, right? If you set that to zero, you get this kind of intense effect. If you don't want it to be quite that intense, you could make it a little bit softer using the softness slider. But um, I kind of like it with the full intensity in here. I think that's giving me a pretty good result. And notice how the distance to the light is going to affect where the caustic reflection is going to happen. So you're going to want to play around with this a little bit um, in order to try to get the results that you're looking for. But this is an easy way to add caustics in your scene. All right, and so just as a high level example, I've created a point light right here and I've added some glass objects from the asset library into the scene. Well, notice how if I move this around, I'm actually getting that refraction of light off of these objects right here. So you can also use this in order to get those refractions um, off of objects like these. Um, so like glass objects right here, if you're looking to do that in your scene. So there's a lot of really interesting things you can do with this. And so one other thing to note is the accuracy of the caustics effect has been reduced somewhat inside of your scenes. Um, it does also get better when you render out an image. So I don't know how well this one's going to work out, but we're going to go ahead and render it anyway. And so we'll do a quick render of this image just to kind of see what we get, but it should give us an even better result than what we're seeing in the viewport. And so if we look at this scene, you can see how the caustics are even better on the wall and the glass does look better as well. Um, so obviously not perfect. There's probably some things I could do to set this up to be a better scene in general, but um, being able to get those caustics off of your glass object, off of your glass objects is a really cool function. So if you do want to download the pro version of D5 Render, which has an asset library and additional features, you can do that through my link on this page. You are going to get a discount if you go through that link. So make sure you check that out if you're interested in the pro version. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.